on top, lithium nickel manganese oxide, you have to run it at a really high voltage, which ne means you need more expensive electrolytes. But what I didn't think of is, well, what if you run this battery at a lower voltage and just use a standard electrolyte solution in it? It would probably put it about the energy densities that they're looking at. It'd be cheap, it would be cobalt free, it would be a nice mix. It would be somewhere in between the lithium iron phosphate, which is super cheap, readily available right. materials, and the nickel manganese cobalt, which is this really uh, high-end material. It would, it would hit the sweet spot right between those. Still good energy density, but cheap as well. And I, I think from what I've heard as well, that it has a pretty good lifespan, that you don't have to worry about the degradation issues too much either with that. And yeah. I think that what, what plays into that too is it might not be what they put in like the longest range batteries, but they still sell quite a few of their like, I think at the standard range and count those entry ones. And as long as you can kind of fit in that same, even if it has a lower energy density, I think that's where you could definitely have a pretty good opportunity to put in that same kind of tray size. Uh, mm -hmm. If you can really start lowering the cost. I know that's been the big thing for a lot of automakers in China with the uh, subsidies that they're kind of starting to, tweak to really, I mean, I, I think it's well-intentioned, just they're trying to pull it back a little bit, but really put the focus on making uh, cars that are pretty uh, cost-effective for a lot of people to purchase. Exactly. And I think that's what, where China is really doing an amazing job. They're not going with the most flash technology that they can, the coolest technology with the highest numbers. They're going with, all right, what's cheap and what can we make a lot of? And, um, What's underappreciated is companies like BYD have had more of a positive impact on CO2 emissions than Tesla's had because they've cranked out so many batteries and they're putting those batteries into vehicles that are typically extremely polluting like buses, et cetera. And of course, those buses help take extra cars off the road. So it's a, it's a compounding effect. So um, BYD, CATL, these Chinese companies are underappreciated. People are, are all worried about Tesla stealing technology or Chinese companies stealing technology from Tesla. I don't think they have to worry about that. Tesla, I think most of the Chinese companies are actually in certain ways ahead of Tesla, like sell the pack technology, for instance. Well, and that's one of the areas where Tesla does steal all of the, a lot of the news headlines is because they're kind of in two areas. They have the, obviously the battery production because they're so vertically integrated, but then they're, they've got the sexy, I mean, no one, no one's going to be like the average person isn't going to be reading some article about BYD's latest battery. They will probably be reading car and driver about Tesla's new car and therefore learn about the batteries that they're making. Uh, with that greater exposure, do you think there's any other companies like VW or GM that are doing some really interesting things or starting to make the steps into the right space for making electric vehicles more common? VW seems to be headed in the right direction if they can get that software sorted out. Yeah. You mentioned, was it uh, Hyundai? Yeah, the Hyundai. You mentioned before? Yeah. They seem to, for a while, they seem to have be, been headed in the right direction. But it seems like the German automakers, the European automakers, are the ones that are really realizing that they need to change their tune. They need to completely retool an entire industry. And there's a political motivation there as well. The politicians realize that the German auto industry pretty much is, you know, the backbone of industry in Germany. Even if VW and these companies fail and they go bankrupt, I believe the government's going to be there to pick up the pieces. So no matter what happens, I see the European automakers as uh, a close second. I'm not including China in that. I mean, I think they're already in the lead and Tesla would be number two in terms of the actual number of getting, num getting vehicles on the road. But the, in terms of the, the companies that people would be interested in, I think VW. And the one that has particular interest for me is Remac. They mm -hmm. don't get enough love. That's a fascinating company. They're doing everything first principles from the ground up. And on a weekly basis, they do uh, a YouTube chat slash channel with the CEO. And he walks you through some of the engineering that they're doing and talks about how they're making their products. No, that, that's actually a great point. Like Mate and what they're doing at Rimac is like very impressive. I think 
for a long time, it seemed like they were getting some news because they were the European Tesla. And it, it seems, I think there's been a bit of a pivot to they've moved from being so much a car manufacturers to now they're really the OEM supplier working behind the scenes to really help a lot of these European car makers with their, I mean, they, in a lot of ways, they're starting to play the role that like LG played for the actual powertrain development that they're doing for GM and other car manufacturers. Rimax doing quite a bit of that for a lot of the higher end uh, performance cars, along with starting, it sounds like to get into even, uh, I believe maybe work with some of the Korean and other kind of more uh, higher production volume car manufacturers as well. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't even realize until a couple of weeks ago. Monte was walking around the factory floor saying, all right, this goes into a Koenigsegg, this goes yeah. for X vehicle or Y vehicle. I'm like, oh, wow, this company's got its fingers in a lot of pies. It's one to watch. Yeah, I think it, it is kind of interesting because you look like, at least domestically for me, in North America, you've got like Rivian's probably kind of the up and coming one that's got a lot of interest for having maybe more of a backing in some regards to the traditional automakers being more based in the Midwest. A lot of people they're bringing over from Ford and GM into the space. But when you actually look at who's making that big impact, I would agree with you. Like for the longest time, Rimac has been kind of under the radar and some of the technology that they have brought to market, I believe it was called the concept one, their high performance car. Uh, probably it's most un pro and con was it was on that top gear episode where it caught it crashed. And I think that kind of has since then, unfortunately, obviously it was for entertainment purposes versus like being something of like saying anything about the car. But I think that's it probably, I don't know if it's done more good or bad for them from a car production standpoint, but it's definitely put them on uh, a lot of OEM and manufacturers radars for like a supplier to get that engineering and experience in the realm that really matters as they start making this change. Well, I suppose it's better to be notorious than unknown. Yeah, yeah no, that's <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I often forget about Rivian but because they have a, to me, they're, they have the most promise in North America besides totally. Tesla, but they, they, that they haven't delivered anything yet. Remac is one of the few companies that have delivered things. And For a long time. Amazing. And, yeah. And, they, and they've been cool. Really cool. Well, and I, I, I'm definitely excited by the technology that Rivian's working on, but at the same time, it's like a very, it's kind of like that outdoorsy Patagonia wearing, like there's a clear market for it, but it's also really expensive and not really for everyone. And it probably does not have, it doesn't translate to who knows what they do and what's down the road, but it kind of how they position themselves. It's kind of been placed as an alternative on the higher scale to Tesla. Um, instead of having the city, EV, they're, they're kind of focused on the outdoor drive in Moab uh, off-road EV. And I, I think it'll be cool to see if they start expanding and they have their own Model 3 moment, whether that's like a Ford Escape style knockoff or something that more people can buy. But yeah, I, I think that that's kind of one of the things I was excited to have you on as well is also to give more of a global perspective on that, uh, what you're seeing from uh, whether it be EVs, but also moves in just the larger industries. Well, I had a, a good conversation with uh, Yvonne from EV Stock Channel on this. And my view was that it seems like a lot of these automakers are going to go bankrupt. And it's only large organizations, they only change when they experience a st systemic shock. Right. 